Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. A general reminder for those who do not know, MIC is having a one-year anniversary event where Bao is going to be trading live in front of our members. It's coming up August 17th. Mark your calendars. As an added benefit for our members, the event is 100% and exclusively free for annual and lifetime members. While lifetime, on top of that, get extra coaching before the event and guaranteed front row seating. While most charge for these events, we show our support by making it, again, free for annual and lifetime members. If you are interested in signing up for this event, DM TBradley90 in MIC Slack chat and or email myself at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Now, we have a very special video for you guys today as Austin, who goes by Aloha Trader in MIC chat, who is both long and short, does a weekly Thursday webinar series. And this week is episode six, and he's going to talk about key trades of MLNT, market sentiment currently, and MIC strategies. And while today is just a preview of the full-length video, if you want to watch the full length or any of our exclusive content, then become an MIC member. Like I used to hate the word edge because as a trader, because like, what is an edge, right? Like you're trading with edge, like the market's hard. Like how do you define an edge? And the way I define an edge is anything that you have over another trader, right? Anything that you, anything that you are better at than somebody else, basically you have an advantage against other people. And we're going to get into it um, near the end. So a little preview. All right, so today I'm going to go over uh, some of the key trades of the week. Again, I'm scraping the barrel for these in summertime. It's, what, what's cool is, though, about this is we're getting a little bit each week as far as plays. It's, um, and I'm hoping that continues because that, that can make summer durable. So, and we're going to go over our weekly market sentiment. Uh, a couple trader topics I've been getting a, a lot of questions on that I want to shed some light on. and. Um, uh, then we're going to do the trading center and then we're going to end with Q&A. So get your questions ready. If you guys, you can start asking them now. I'm going to go back and Slack and, and go through all of them. Um, and yeah, let's get to it. So key trades. So uh, I, did a, I did a, if you haven't seen, I did a full on uh, video recap going over my MLNT, tra MLNT trade yesterday. And um, it's, I, I really like it because I actually learned something from the trade. Well, um, from, from this trade, like I haven't like learned something like that, like a Eureka moment in a very long time. So it was kind of fun for me because, and it wasn't really, I learned something, but I more of confirmed something in my mind. Right. So, you know, and, and I'll go over it, but one thing to take note before I get into the trade is that um, MLNT never broke trend, right? Like even from pre-market, it just kind of held this steady trend all day. And so I was shorting it on day one, fighting the trend and I was doing my best, but just to keep in mind, this, this didn't break trend to like the end of the day. So this is something that I was keeping an eye on all day and why I was really quick to cut. Anyway, so MLNT, this was my trade. I did the recap on it. So I'll make this one pretty fast. Um, I was able to get the tops most of the times, like I, I was able to identify the tops here, 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 and here. That's what was pretty good. But there was just no continuation, right? We didn't roll, we didn't roll over here, which, you know, when I, which I was going for here. We didn't roll over here, which, which, which is what the recycles were all about. We didn't roll over here, right? And like, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't go. Like, we finally did crack, but still, there was no rollover yesterday. Just the, the trend was just too strong all day. A little recap. Uh, so, and then today I had a nice, uh, ML, I had a nice day two, I had a nice day two trade on MLNT today. And after my first slide, I always, I always go back and check. Are we still, I hate the word edge too. Um, we're, we're still good, right? I always want to check. Okay, cool. And we begin. And we continue. So, um, so going into day two, um, it's gapping up higher. And so I'm excited. The higher, the better. That's the mentality. And people are asking me, like, you know, what made you short it? How did you know to short it? Well, first of all, like, I was trying to short it yesterday. So that's, that's kind of how it was on my mind to short. So I'm not a saying, like, I didn't just pick this as the, the time to short. Like, I, I shorted it four or five times yesterday. 
So um, the fact that it was gapping up told me that shorts were in trouble. So I was actually willing to be extremely patient with the trade. You know, like let maybe not even trade it till till the end of the day if I had to. I was willing to be really patient because I expected more squeeze. Now, when we were gapping up pre-market, I expected this kind of to go to 10, right? Because like if we're gapping up pre-market and um, it looked like it kind of rolled over after hours and we're gapping up to like eight, I'm thinking, man, if shorts are really in trouble, this can really go. But we couldn't get past eight. And I was like, and I was, that was surprisingly low for an after hour for a pre-market squeezer. So that's what kind of got me interested in the short. When we kind of did this fail here at eight and we like failed seven at the open, I'm like, okay, maybe this is run its course. So that's when I started to look for levels to short off of. And my favorite was $7.30. Why? Because $7.30, I wonder if I can go back. $7.30 was the high of the day yesterday, right? Uh, you know, about 7.30. So that was the level that I was really hoping for. And there was multiple references. One, it was yesterday high a day. And pre-market, pre it, it acknowledged it a couple different times, $7.30. So that, you know, the more times a level is referenced by the stock, the better. Because that means that more people are relying on that stock to tell them what to do. Uh, cool. Now, this was a trade a couple days ago that I totally missed, actually. But I, I, I do want to put it on here because I got a lot of questions on it. Cool starts with the idea of a toxic daily chart. And a lot of the guys in chat nailed this. Um, and, you know, kudos to them. Because, I mean, I should have been a little bit more aggressive in hindsight. But hindsight's 2020, right? So everyone was asking, like, me about cool. Like, I, I missed cool. I missed cool. Like, I had orders. I had orders. I'm like, me too, guys. Me too. I had orders on this. Uh, I know Alex had an amazing short on this. I had 413. The lines are four. They're, see, there are lines here. There's three, there's four, there's 420. And the next one is a psychological 450. And that's kind of what I was going into. I was hoping that we would push on four, get to 420, um, and then maybe go to that four. I was going to have some more shorts in the 430s and hopefully cover down here. This really just, I mean, it pushed on four and just said sayonara right at the gate. At 413 was going to be my start, and I didn't even get it. So, um, I, you know, I, I missed out too, guys. So it's not this, it, this, this isn't a science, right? It's an art. Like, um, sometimes you have to be more aggressive. Sometimes you have to be more liberal. Um, or sometimes you have to be more aggressive. Sometimes you have to be more conservative. On this name, I was a little bit too conservative. And the reason why is probably because I saw it fade so much. It's already faded off so much from where it could have been. So I'm like, well, I want a little bit more out of the move. I was wrong. All right. So market sentiment this week, pretty fun stuff, right? Um, all time highs or market hit all time highs today. And we're all idiots for not buying the dip. Just straight up idiots for not buying the dip because <laughs> it works every time until the one time we think we do it and it's not going to work because that's trading. Um, so we had a lot of, uh, we, not a lot, but kind of like a steady amount of participants. Like I didn't have to change this list very much, like in the number of lists for what I feel were the kind of the biggest, more important runners of the week, runners or movers. Um, Beyond hit, had an insane $200 touch in the week. Um, that's, that's really showing just how much shorts are, are stuck in there. Everyone knows it's overvalued, but um, it's, just, it's just too clogged right now. Um, MLNT today, I think was the, was the strongest stock of the week. Um, EDSA was, um, a sympathy and that was good, but it was kind of weak. Um, I didn't really like how weak it was like, or the fact that we only got one, right. I wanted more the, like, it didn't look weak cause it went up a lot of percent, but it was really low float, like 300,000 share float, hundred percent is really easy. So like, um, I, I kind of wanted to see a flurry of sympathies especially with the market at all-time highs but summer's just taking its toll right like it's it's um it's really harsh but the good news is that like we're getting at least a player to a week um and that's all you need right you don't need to trade every single day like i'm certainly i think i had a i think i had a, a day this this week where i didn't make any trades maybe two um we had a lot of ipos today um i don't really know a whole lot of them um uh except work slack 
Um, I'm, I'm going to be watching that. Actually, I don't even know how it closed. Um, we'll look at it in a second. How did that? How did that close? Yeah. So I'm hoping, like, I'm hoping that one of these, like, in the in the future, uh, in the next coming week, I'm hoping that one of these just decides to go, 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 because then we can get like a nice first red day setup, like pins was, right? Like, you know, uh, sometimes IPOs like to just rock it up, and so this is an opportunity that I'm going to be looking forward to. I'm going to be keeping an eye on all of these, hoping that one of them just decides to go, go, go. So that way we can get a nice short on it, um, a nice short play uh, in the coming weeks. Anyway, these are the sparks of hope, MLNT and EDSA. They were big movers. July earnings season is probably going to kick the curb on some of the small cap land, but if you're a large cap trader, this is what you're looking forward to. Um, right now, I think we're kind of in, like in this cycle. Like, I think we're kind of in the middle. Like, we're, we're getting a little bit of runners. We're, we're certainly getting a lot of tankers like OPTT today and Cool the other day, right? Um, and, like, nothing's like not, – like, there, there wasn't a whole lot of sympathies, which is pointing to, like, a dead market. Like, we only had, like, one. Or DMAC was one, too, but that was pretty weak. Today um, is building good habits, right? I, I was getting a lot of questions of, like, you know, like – like moving orders down like like I keep missing and, and stuff like that and like you have to create good you have to create good habits for yourself because like um, you, you, if you don't have good habits you're not going to be consistent and um, this is like you, we're, we're really good at building good habits when we have a red streak or a big loss and it, we go back to the day one right um, when the when the green streak ends we have a big red day or you know we had like three red days in a row or something. We're like, okay, we got to focus no, back to the drawing board. What made me profitable? What, what led to my consistency? How do I get back to where I was? Right. Um, and it always starts with um, going back to your good habits that you forgot along the way. And so the, the number one good habit that you can have is risk management is, is vital, right? You know, preserving capital is the number one rule and, you, and you um, you should have a printed out piece of paper um, for rules for risk, right? Like, what are your risk rules? Like, or at least know what they are. Like, I know my number one rule for risk is I don't buy anything up three, anything up more than 200% on no news. That's my number one, or my number two rule, right? Number one rule is preserving capital, live to trade another day, take the cut no matter how big it is so that you can keep trading. The second rule is um, I don't buy anything up 200% on no news. I'm too afraid of an LFIN halt or a CETC halt, right? I'm just too afraid of that kind of stuff. So just know your rules. Know, um, know your rules about trade execution. I'm going to go into some of that in, in a little bit. But um, uh, and, knowing, and, and knowing your stops. Knowing your stops is going to um, – being aware of your stops is going to be – is going to allow you the freedom in the trade to exercise your good habits because um, when when you're tri when you don't know what your stops are, or you, if you don't know what your stop is, or you're not aware of your risk, when risk management is not number one, uh, I, 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 maybe I can't speak for everybody, but for me, when I'm not actively aware of my risk, my trading's kind of all over the place because I'm just you know buying here, selling here, like shorting here, whatever it's gonna be, right? I'm just kind of like freelancing everything and you know like I might be just randomly stopping out of stuff because oh I didn't like that right but like the reason why I didn't like that is because I'm not prepared for the trade so when risk management is number one on your mind um, it, it allows you the freedom to to trade the way you know you should like now you're free to practice your good habits because um, you know in the back of your mind everything's all G when everything's all G um, you can trade when everything's not all G in your mind when you don't have that state of mind comfort your trading can be very eclectic um, uh, Reasonable outcomes is a really good habit to have and I, I, I was talking um, To a trader uh, today or yesterday or see that I took a nap so I can't even tell if it was today or yesterday um, No, it was today about outcomes and like scaling into moves right and how like sometimes when we scale into moves we have to move the, the outcome of the trade down or up as, as the trade pans out um so anyway so these are some of my good habits and bad habits so some of the good habits that i have 
I downsize if my entry sucks. So like if I enter into a bat, I will show you a great example for the second the slide is over. Um, I downsize if my entry sucks. Um, I also, I'm very patient with my entry, right? And I can abstain for weeks. So these are some of my good habits. I don't have to, I can, I don't have to trade for weeks. If I don't see anything good, I really don't feel the need to, to place the trades or at least anything with size. I, sometimes I'll dick around with, with, with minuscule size, cause, but that, that's, that's how I justify it. Like it's minuscule. Um, but yeah, if I'm, if I'm in a stock and I enter and, and I know my, and I don't like my entry, I immediately downsize. And I did this on MLNT when like I did, like I shorted it, like, when I shorted and covered, and then I accidentally covered, so I reshorted, but my average is shit. I just kind of covered it right away. That, that's a good habit that I have. It, it protects my risk. All the good habits are gonna be risk-based. Um, I also grade my setups. Bef every single, before I enter every trade out loud, I say, this is an A setup, this is a B setup, this is a C setup, and I, and I judge, and I put my size on accordingly. So that's a really good habit that I have. That like I, I will literally say it out loud to keep this habit going. I will always uh, I will admit when I'm wrong. I'm very very. I don't think I've been stubborn in a trade for over a year where I just held right. I just held through something I shouldn't have right. Like I just don't do it. Like I'll admit when I'm wrong really well. I, I'll just take the trade off. That's a really good habit that I have. And that my 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 last good habit that I want to say. Like I have a really good poker mindset. Like. Um, I treat trading like poker and I don't let like one trade really F with my mind. That's what I'm really good at and a good catalyst. Why did you just start the day with, I didn't actually, short, the short bias, sorry, not to interrupt the question. What made you decide not to look for a first bounce on it, just trying to find out what determined your pre-market piece since it moved so strong and upright? So good, 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 good question. I actually did want to long it at first. I wanted to long it at 285. That's when it first popped up and I'm, that's when it, so what I did with OPTT, What I did with OPTT today, <laughs> I guess maybe this is psychological, I didn't even realize it. What I did with OPTT today is what I wanted to do with MLNT yesterday. I, I kind of bought it here thinking that it was gonna do an MLNT kind of sympathy move. And MLNT, um, yesterday, I wanted to buy it at 285. That's a, I remember watching it at 285, I'm like, no, this is FDA, it can go. Um, right, like right here, like right there. Like 285, I wanted to buy it right there at 285. But I'm like, this is a bad entry zone. You can't do that. You can't do that. But like, it all depends on what um, you deem is reasonable, right? Did I really think that it was going to go nuts like that? Um, well, I didn't because we hadn't seen one for a while do that. So I didn't have that confidence reassuring like I did with OPTT. But OPTT is a total, total, total turn. And like the, the news really sucked. It was an old news anyway. It's not like FDA approval. Like they just put out their PR about their wave energy buoy for the like 20th time. So that's why I was quick to exit that one too. But um, yeah, like I wanted to buy it here. And when I felt I missed it, see, when I felt that I missed the move, that's when like I tend to sometimes look for the short, like, oh, I missed the long and now I don't want to chase the long. I want to short it. So that's kind of why I get into the mentality. I didn't look for a first bounce on it because it grinded. I typically like, I typically like first bounce moves on like, big moves where people feel they're missing it, right? People feel like they missed a big move and so like the dip comes and people are buying the dip. This is a steady pre-market trend, so I didn't really see the opportunity for a first bounce. Um, you know, like this um, This is a pretty good first, like first dip to buy, I guess. You know, in hindsight, it's easy to say that, but um, uh, I mean, well, Harry nailed it, so. <laughs> um, that, that may be what he was thinking there too. But yeah, I, I didn't feel the FOMO of the first bounce because like this was a nice steady grind rather than like a this kind of move, right? Sorry. Um, do you dip by and long on the inner lines uh, or do you focus solely on the outer line? So, I mean, it's all relative. Uh, it depends on the liquidity. It depends on the float. It depends on where, how far in between the, the, the support lines are. Um, it depends on like if it's like three red candles in a row, if it's just the first one, if it's the first red candle in an inner line. See, all this stuff kind of comes into play, right? Like, um, it, like how much volume is on the tank? Like, do like, right? Like, what's my range estimation of it? So, like, I can't answer this solely, but I guess as a general rule, 
um, if like I, I, as a super general rule, like if I'm conservative, I'm going for the outer line. If I'm aggressive, I'm going for the inner line. If it's um, if it's a if it's a piggy short, I'm definitely starting early, right? Because I have conviction. Like if I have conviction, I'm much more willing to go into an inner line, right? Because like I I, I have a feeling I'm going to be right. I'm willing to go for that inner line. Like if I, sometimes if I feel shorts are really 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 trapped, I'll go for the inner line because I don't feel like they're going to get the relief, right? I don't think they're going to get the relief of the outer line. Like if shorts are truly trapped, if shorts are truly 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 trapped. They're not then then like they're not gonna get the out right. There's just gonna be too many covers to where they're not gonna get that outer line relief. And if they do get the outer line relief, then it's almost like going back to the webinar. Do I really want to buy there? Is my thesis right? Like if I if I'm going for an inner line buy and I get the outer line, but the thesis was it shorts a trapped. There a lot of them maybe aren't trapped anymore, and so now maybe some longs are trapped. So like maybe my thesis changed. Now, do I really want to be adding into this trade now? Right. So that kind of plays into what I was talking about in the webinar, like depending on what your thesis is, maybe when the outer line comes, you don't want it. Um, yeah, I just wonder if, yeah, they don't. Um, yeah. Okay. Some people might have different stops for each quantity you put on. Yeah. And that's a good way to think of it. That's, that's a way of thinking of, of each ads is each, each ad is an individual trade. You know, but if, if that's truly your thought process, then at 2.30, why do you still have a two short, right? If two, you know, if each of them is an individual trade and you short a two, 2.10, 2.20, 2.30, then at 2.30, what in the world are you doing with the $2 short on, right? If you're treating it as an individual trade. So that kind of runs into a little logical problem there. Um, so that's why I think it's simpler just to um, short ranges. Uh, short the range and cover the range, right? The, it's all one short that you're splitting up. I feel like that's easier on the brain to think about, but maybe that's just me. Um, yeah, and depending on how it's holding on the tape. Um, do you still use hotkeys on a stock with a wider spread? Yes, I do. Um, if so, how do you approach that? Um, or do you manually enter those? So actually, um, let's back up. Um, if there is time, if there is time, um, I will do the manual order. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.